Welcome, I'm Sally Trainer. This is Lesson 2, Series 1 of the Basic Watercolor Series. This one is entitled The Lonesome Tree Reversed. The three pigments that we'll be using throughout this lesson are very important because they have specific attributes to which we will use. The first is burnt sienna, which is a low intensity red and non-staining. The second is French ultramarine blue, which is a primary blue and granulating, also non-staining. The third is quinacridone or quin gold, which is a low intensity, very warm yellow. Our focus for this lesson will be learning to control the amount of water in our brush and the amount of pigment in our brush. And secondly, the amount of pigment or saturation in our puddles of color. So let's paint. So let's just do um, tree. And um, you don't have to use the palette I'm using, but I think it's an interesting palette because it gives you a green that's not a typical green. And it does give you great options for your trunk. So I'm going to go back into this puddle and make it nice and strong. Lots of pigment. <sighs> kind of neutral, but a little warm. What's making it brown? I mean, I can't get mine darker. It, again, it's ratio of ratio. which color you're adding the most of. Mm. And it's going to look brown if you've got like this. If, if you put lots of that burnt sienna in there, it's going to be warm. But all you have to do to correct that is add some of the blue and it takes it back. Yes? Makes sense? Yes, it does. It did. It worked. Okay, good. All right. So um, for the trunk, kind of start in the middle um, on these. So I'm going to do the roots after I start the trunk already. You know, and I'm going to drag the paint out from the main trunk and lift the brush as I pull it out. And it gives me roots that look kind of logical. I'm going to push this a little bit more than I did the first time and add more pigment to the trunk, make it more interesting. Okay. And I'm going to make the branches come out in different angles than I did before. Okay, I'm going into my yellow first. I'm just using the puddles that I already had started. And then my blue, because sometimes I remember to do that. And back into the blue. So, um, kind of abstract shapes. Uh, remember to come in while this Everything is still wet. So now you're hiding those branches that are behind there and the trunk that's behind there. It's really, it, timing is everything. You got to think about it. Um, this might seem that these are not deliberate strokes, but they are. Um, I'm going to just add a few branches in here, because I don't want to forget that they're there. Doesn't matter if the branch touches the wet foliage. Um, I'm also now up in the in the foliage portion coming in with pure color rather than mixed color. So I'm dropping in blue and I dropped in some burnt sienna and I'm 
dropping in in places um, the Quinn Gold as well. And it's I think it's richer when you do that. I'm not picking up water anymore. I'm just picking up paint now. Um, I've still got standing water on my trunk. And so I have to be careful about that, but I can play a little bit with my trunk. I'm gonna thicken this side branch here a little bit. Give myself a couple knobs that come off. Part of this is ready to scrape, part of this is not. Let's see what happens. Remember to have a paper towel or something to wipe the paint off your palette knife that you remove. You can see some of these areas, the paint's running right back in. But some of the areas I can now come in with kind of kind of thick paint and add color to them. And I brought, brought my brush. And I'm almost to the point where I have to quit this. I think I'll score a little bit into the trunk because that's always kind of interesting. I won't be able to see much of that until it dries a little bit more, but it's I know I'm going to get some nice striations um, that are bark-like. And I have to stop that. Um, I can come back to this, which is nice and dry now. Um, it's always nice to have something waiting in the wings so that you don't overwork things. OK, I'm going to move forward. Um, again, I think I'll leave the sky quite bright and white. I can always come back in later and add uh, some color to it. But right now, I kind of like the brightness that I'm getting through the foliage. So I'm going to make my horizon a higher than what I did in the last one. So let's give ourselves a little mountain, maybe. It's going to have a little more color than I would ordinarily if this was one of the lonesome trees. But um, I'm going to dampen the paper where I'm going to do the background, but just dampen it, not, not wet, wet. And of course, uh, my water is kind of dirty now, but that's OK, because it's just giving me a, a tone. And whatever I do to one side of the tree, I have to do to the other. Incidentally, you know, if you need to wick up water, you have to have a thirsty brush. That means it has to be wet, but damp only, really. So now I'm going to just play a couple of games, changing values as I come down into the mid distance. Different bunch of stuff happening back there now as I. Is it wicking up mountain? Oh. Yes, because it's wet. It's more, um, I'm on a little bit of an incline here, so it's more wicking down. <laughs> yep. I'm going to come in with my rigor into that middle distance because we'll be able to see things going on in that middle distance. Don't pick up any more water at this point. You want to just keep adding value. Now, I think I'll come in with yet another brush. Broke my rule. Didn't block my brush. So now I've, I've added a, a different kind of terrain by adding that stripe of yellow. I'm wet wetting the bottom of the paper now because I'm going to do some just fun stuff there, just with paint. Lots and lots of value. 
because as it gets closer to us, we know that we're going to be able to see more stuff. But I'm going to just come in back here because now it's getting drier. And I'm going to add stuff happening back here too. Sally, did you wet the paper where you put the yellow in? Yes, I did. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on damp paper all the way around now. But it's not, it's not as wet as it would be if we had used a sponge, just wet on the surface. And now I'm just adding kind of a, a very low intensity green all across the front so that I have something to wrap color into and play games with. And I'm gonna start really quite thick paint now. Gonna go back into that area that I was working on before and add more, more detail. And I'm gonna bring some of that down into the piece of yellow there. It gives you the illusion of maybe some bushes, but I'm now painting behind those bushes. Now I'm painting in front of the bushes. Quite often I'll just take advantage of things that um, the paint is starting to suggest to me and turn them into bushes or little trees or whatever. And as it dries, you're going to get some interesting edges and you want to you want to keep those edges. You want to encourage them. This is the point at which you really want to be careful how you hold your brush as opposed to your paper. You want to hold your brush pretty upright because then you can really control your strokes. And that's important at this point because you want to make sure that you're not putting too much paint any place. I'm having a good time now painting behind this a um, bit of yellow and I'm turning those into objects. So now I'm doing a little bit of negative painting. Again, I'm paying attention to what's where in space, what's where in what plane. So anything that's behind the tree continues on behind on both sides. And I'm getting at this point some nice granulation from the French ultramarine. It doesn't bother me that this hillside back there doesn't have a lot of detail uh, in it. It's, it's pretty far away and I don't care that it doesn't have a lot of detail. Because the further away it is, the less we can see of the detail. Putting in a couple little pine trees back in there. Mm. Kind of fun to do. And pine trees are just lines with lines running across them. You don't want to get any more detailed than that. You don't want to, you don't want to paint every needle. And when you do them on damp paper, it gives you that really nice fuzzy look that pine trees have. You can actually wait for this to dry and re-wet gently so you don't lift what's there and paint pine trees into damp paper and get that pine tree effect um, in another go round. But I've still got enough dampness here to be able to do it at this stage. Don't forget, as long as it's wet, you can keep adding color as long as you control the amount of water. Um, now I'm doing just a little odd stuff that is painting behind some little grasses. 
So I'm painting the dark areas behind the little grasses. I'm not painting the grasses themselves. see the little grass yeah. yeah yeah um i don't more to that because it's getting kind of busy and i can back to it um i've made sure every color that i've used elsewhere i've used in my foreground and my midground um one of the things i want to do with this uh tree is come back to it and work on the trunk again to give it a little more life it's mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, I ran out of water too soon to work it too much. So I can always do that. And I can also do a lot of that up in the, in the top. But right now it's, um, it's looking kind of interesting to me. I'm, I'm liking what's happening in the foreground and uh, it's starting to, um, starting to have some logic to it. I think you'll, um, I think you'll find that you'll get, you'll get better and better at these and they will please you. So I can do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. very nice. Ooh. That bark is great. The bark is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And um, maybe you can see this better than what we were seeing before too. Have you done anything uh -huh. with those blue oh, shit? Yeah. No, wow. I can do that right now quickly. Uh, there's a lot of ways to approach this. One of them is to just gently wet, first of all, um, with um, a clean brush. So uh, this is, I'm just doing it with a, a soft brush and I'm gonna blot it and see what happens. No, nope, it's still, it's still too prominent. Okay, um, so I'm taking a bristle brush that you or would ordinarily use for acrylics or for oils, and I'm just gently rubbing it. It's, the paper is damp, and that's reducing the value of those spots. It's not perfect, it's better. Okay, here is something I can do that will make it more appropriate. I could play with that a little bit, but um, I, can, I can make that work better. Yeah. That's already better. Yeah. 